John Kerry, en fonction des pouvoirs qui lui sont conférés par le président de la République, et nous faisons grand officier de la République. Well, I'm heavier now. Uh, Jean-Marc, uh, merci beaucoup, merci mes amis. I'm so grateful to all of you for coming here, uh, uh, to all of the Aero family who uh, attended and gave us a wonderful lunch today, which we enjoyed enormously. Madame Aero, merci. To Madame la Présidente, the, the cop that helped us uh, so enormously to be able to pass the uh, Paris Agreement. Uh, distinguished ambassadors, your excellencies, your highness, thank you so much, my friend, the Aga Khan. I'm deeply appreciative for our friendship and for your efforts for peace around the world. Um, I, I, I'm really humbled to receive this award. I mean that. This is one of the great distinctions, and I've heard about the Legion d'Honneur for years. Who hasn't? Um, it's an incredible privilege to follow in the footsteps of so many fine people and some Americans who have been distinguished through the years to win this. Diplomats, scholars, uh, artists, uh, and in so many ways it contributes to the special relationship that John Mark talked about, which goes back so far. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, there's a, there's a play on Broadway now about Hamilton. And if you've been lucky enough to see it or listen to it, Lafayette is much celebrated in that play and a very funny character, may I add. Um, but everybody in America is rekindling this personal sense of the relationship between us. Uh, I'm deeply appreciative to Jean-Marc on a personal level. We are, I think, kindred spirits, if I may say. Um, he is a man of enormous passion uh, today's meeting, the meeting, he's always saying, we have to do something, we have to do something. It's like that story I just told you about the bicycle. Uh, all the things he said about the bicycle are true, but the thing he didn't add is that if you stop moving, you fall over. <laughs> you have to keep moving. It is like diplomacy, I mean that. And we have kept moving together, and believe me, we are planning even in these next weeks uh, to move together in ways that I hope uh, can make a difference, but Jean-Marc has been willing to confront every issue, and it is so wonderful to have a country uh, and a foreign minister who see the same things happening and are moved in the same way to believe that we can make a difference. Um, Thomas Jefferson, as we all know, had a very special relationship with France, and he wrote in his autobiography, uh, ask the traveled inhabitant of any nation, he said, in what country on earth would you rather live? And then he said, certainly in my own, he answered it, but which would be your second choice? France. And he said it would be the second choice for everybody. And many people have attributed him to saying that chacun a deux pays, le sien et la France. He did not, in fact, say that, but it's okay, it's a good thing to say. <laughs> Uh, he might well have said it. Uh, Jefferson's affinity for this storied country was very well known everywhere, but I think his statement, <coughs> excuse me, actually conveys something much more than just a mere affection. Uh, he argued that any true citizen can be a patriot in his or her own country uh, and still harbor a sincere respect for the values espoused by post-revolutionary France, and that's what he was really referring to, precisely because those values were universal in their application. And I might add formative, really, for the United States in so many ways, the belief in freedom, 
the belief in equality before the law, uh, faith in democracy and the basic dignity of every single human being. In the immortal phrase, liberté, égalité, fraternité, and I think uh, my wife Teresa would respectfully add sororité. Um, we have stood together, as Jean-Marc said in his very generous and very eloquent comments, which chronicle parts of my life I have to sort of pull back on. But uh, together we have traveled this journey of uh, peaceful pursuit of social progress, of continuing to try to respect the rights of man, to live an honest life in democracy where people really are respected and where we can do better. And most importantly, where we live by rule of law. And we see the challenges to that in today's world. Uh, so I accept, accept this really in a sense as an added reminder of the duty yet ahead to continue to work to live out those ideals and, and, and never stop working for the highest and best aspirations that we all share. Uh, and we have a lot of work to do in that regard because there are dangerous currents of authoritarian populism and no part of the world remembers better what happens when difficult economies mix with sectarian exploitation with nationalism and fear. Uh, we really need to be careful going forward and think hard about the choices that we face. So I just share with everybody here, uh, we are pursuing diplomacy because the world needs uh, the values that have been espoused by France and the United States since our inception and built on the experience of France. And we've done well together, all of us. We have worked so hard together, I can't tell you, on the Iran nuclear agreement uh, uh, with Laurent at the time, uh, Laurent Fabius with, with uh, it was unique, frankly, that you know, six countries came together, seven countries in all, in this complicated world and actually found a path forward and worked together and so sort of sorted through difficult uh, contradictions. And I think that uh, for all of us, that's a dear daughter who helped me out, folks. That's my daughter. I mean, I was talking to, I was talking to Jean Marc's daughter before, uh, and, and I know how, how much she loves her dad and how much she tried to show through her film the real Jean Marc. And I can appreciate because I've had those conversations with my daughter. And sometimes they're the best political advisors, and they tell you the truth. But um, in this day and age, folks, we cannot confuse national pride with national self-sufficiency or think that exclusionary po po policies are somehow going to solve the problems that we, we face. So let me just be clear, and I'll wrap up quickly here. Uh, in the 21st century, Every country needs partners in order to prosper. None of us move alone. I grew up in an age that Jean-Marc referred to when in the post-war world, most economies had been destroyed. Uh, and we came in with the Marshall Plan, which people in the United States, by the way, did not support initially, did not understand how we were gonna turn around and rebuild Germany and rebuild Japan. But look at, the results of those investments, what they mean to this entity called Europe as well as to the world. So thinking bigger, trying to uh, provide a better vision for people of what the choices are uh, is not highfalutin, it's not out of touch, it's not pie in the sky. It's what defines both of our countries, and it's why we are who we are, and it's why we are where we are. And so I believe very, very deeply that, uh, uh, you know, we need to <clears throat> uh, maintain our fidelity uh, to those values. I know this is a very loyal man, and he knows what fidelity means. And I know France understands that full well. We've uh, <clears throat> weathered great storms together. 
Uh, I know this is a time of uncertainty. I ask you not to be uh, diminished by the cross currents that are uh, flowing through the world today because I'm convinced, and I really believe this, I see the world, I see the glass as definitively uh, half full, not half empty. And I say that because for the first time in history, <clears throat> severe poverty is under the 10 percent mark on, on this planet. We are curing diseases we never thought we could cure. If you are a young person born in some deprived place in the world, you are more likely to be fed and more likely to go to school than any time in human history. If you are a mother giving birth somewhere in the world, you are more likely not to die in the bringing to life than at any time in human history. We have food and food product, capacity to grow. But even as we do that, yeah, we've got climate change, all these other challenges. I, I am absolutely convinced that uh, we know the choices we need to make. They're staring us in the face. There's no problem we face that doesn't have a solution. And uh, this will continue to inspire me to stay at it and continue to work in whatever capacity I can. Jean-Marc uh, kindly mentioned my mother and my affinity for France. Uh, it does date back uh, generations in our family. And my sense of war dated back to then. One of my first memories was walking the beaches of uh, being at the beach of Normandy. I think I was about four years old. It was not too long after the war, and my mother came back to see the house that they had grown up in that had been used by the Germans and then bombed and burned when they left it. And I remember walking through the broken glass and holding her hand, and she was crying, and I didn't understand why. But I do now. And that's really when I began to understand the cost of war and the need for all of us to uh, keep fighting for peace always. Later on in, in, in her life, she became a nurse here, and she was working at Montparnasse, taking care of the wounded, when one night she was told, uh, incredible that she didn't know, that the Germans were about to march into the city. So she ran home, got her sister, newly married, and married a French artist, and they all got on their bicycles and they foraged their way across France, found their way to Portugal, and got on a ship and came. So, uh, merci. And, and uh, married my father, and here I am. Um, she wrote to her future husband at that point in time, they had met in Sambriac, it is a shock to find a country that had, one has admired and loved crumbling away. So we will not allow great edifices, great institutions, great ideas to crumble away. And I just uh, say thank you to you for this extraordinary honor. Um, I would also say thank you to Napoleon Bonaparte for creating it. And uh, I just, uh, this award will not just be, a, not for me, this is a award about our relationship, about France and the United States, about the values that we cherish and the enduring friendship that we have. So vive, uh, vive les frites. <laughs> Vive les, you know, French fries. Vive la France et vive les États-Unis et tous mes amis. Merci beaucoup.